Hey guys, today we're going to transform this mosaic billet we made in part 1 into a chef knife. Then we're going to grind shape and handle and maybe incorporate something interesting in the bolster. What is it? You probably know. But first, we need to forge the knife. So always make templates for the knives I want to make because when it comes to forging, they do act as a good visual guide. But the first thing I want to do is find out how much material I need for the bolster by isolating it. If you don't have enough mass in the bolster, like I don't now, you can use a technique called upsetting, which is compressing the steel on the end of the billet onto itself. The next step is establishing the heel of your knife. Keep in mind to draw out the heel whilst you have enough mass in the area because it can prove to be difficult after you've drawn out the billet. Once that's all figured out, I can proceed to forge the blade. Oh, very close. This is my redemption arc with the keyhole because whether or luck or not, the best way to get good at something is to do it a fail and then do it again but fail less harder. And that's the story of my life. And if it's not perfect, that's okay because I'll get there. Sometimes I just need to say to myself, it's okay. It's fine, it's not the end of the world, just try better next time. But if it's not, I'll tell you what, I'm gone. Anyways, with today's project, I'm doing a double keyhole from both sides. This is not my first attempt, I'll show you my first attempt, but this is my second. And like I said, I'm going to try and make this better. I marked out the keyholes by drawing half the template of design I wanted, which is the area that would be the negative space. After that, I proceeded to place that on an aluminium sheet, then mirrored it to create an overall profile, then scribed it. I then cut out in the middle, leaving the outside profile, and laid that on a bolster, making sure it was in the exact same position on both sides by the use of center lines, and then marked that. This material here that I'm using is called Mammoth Ivory that I got from a site called Arctic Antiques. This is not illegal because mammoths are extinct, it's not like elephant ivory. So if you are interested or just want to know pricing, you can go visit their website. I'm not sponsored by the way or obviously, but they say this ivory dates back to over 10,000 years ago and of the mammoth primigenius. But the geological ep epoch, epoch ep or epoch, please the scene, please the scene. I don't know why I gave that a go. One thing I learned doing these is get them as close as possible, but don't get carried away because you might take too much material off. Shamp for the side that's going in first. Do like a really slight 45 shamp. Put a marker around this. I use a permanent marker so I could line this up and give it a tap, and then hopefully the marker on this would transfer itself over onto the key insert. I don't know what you call it, but yeah, that's what I'm be doing now. I just want to say this isn't the end all be all way to do this. If there is a different way they'll prove to be better, I'll find it and I'll share it. So I did make a mistake here, there's not enough material so I'm going to have to laminate this piece on. It's not ideal because I did draw a center line on the ivory block going through the center of the keyhole as a reference to ensure all grain lines up and looks like it flows together. Luckily with mammoth ivory it is a fairly simple grain so I might get away with it but for something like a bell that's a different story.
Okay, so that's now the top and bottom done. Now to do the middle. Now I have to make a big choice because there's a lot of variables. So the question is, do I do a 24 karat gold white inlay in the bolster? Because if I do, I need to do it now before the heat treat. But the dilemma is I can't guarantee success based on my skill level and I can't imagine what it'll look like either. It might look horrendous. I have to somehow visualize it with all the components, the mosaic Damascus, ivory, and ask myself if it will be too much. I did choose ivory because it is exotic, but also simple. There's really not much action going on in ivory to make things overwhelming in partnership with the blade. That's kind of why I chose it. But also, I love gold. But if it means a knife costs more, people usually choose not to have it, which obviously makes sense. But I'm also scared that it might stuff up. I could do it with Argentinian silver, but... Not sure about that either. If I were to go and etch the blade, I'm pretty sure that would tarnish. But obviously gold doesn't. So I could use something like that, go all the way around. It's a nice little accent. Stuff, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Might come off that I've, I'm rich because I've got mammoth ivory, a lot of 24 karat gold white inlay, the, it's all Damascus. Obviously it costs a lot, but I can guarantee it's just poor financial choices. I'll make this, I'll show you the inlay. I ain't no Carl Royer, but. Oh, dude, this thing's good. I think I'm allergic to being good at stuff. Alright. Two different ways that I know people doing inlays. First one's the fire inlay, which is creating grooves in the steel and brazing it to fill in the areas that you cut out. The second way is mechanically fixing it by using a series of undercuts and barbs, sticking up, creating dovetails. You'll start by first undercutting the side of the channel you made. You should actually see the steel move upwards, and then follow up by coining the bottom of the channel, creating a series of barbs going into dovetail formation. The gold will work its way into the groove and anchor itself in there. The reason why 24 karat gold is used most of the time is the fact that it's more soft and malleable. It doesn't have the silver or copper in there like the other carrots, making it harder. Therefore, it's easier to form to the groove, although you can use other metals, but they may require more effort. Okay, I've got this blackening solution that I'm just going to dip the bolster in. It's relatively polished. I used a Trizac belt, but I just want to quickly see the contrast of what it will look like. Now, I'm not going to blacken the original thing. I will etch it because it's an integral and I want the pattern to flow through the blade to the bolster. But I just want to see how good it will come out. So this is the end of part two, and if you haven't seen part one, the making of the billet, feel free to watch that and get caught up to date. Now, I asked if I could get some feedback on the audio and clarity of my speech because I'm trying to make it better. And if I know I'm improving, I need to, or need to fix something, it helps a lot. Now, in part three, I'll be doing the finish grind, sand, the knife, etch, which I was actually hoping to do in this part, but I just couldn't because of the order of operations I had to do everything in. And obviously, I'll be finishing off the handle all on part three. So if you want to see that, please subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.